I guess the other thing that comes up sometimes is the other other factors that might influence adrenal function. One of them might be um, blood sugar issues. Um, for thyroid hormone to work correctly, glucose needs to flow into the cells. And if there are blood sugar issues that, that might be due to insulin or um, due to the digestive system not working correctly, and if insulin isn't uh, there in the right volume, then the level of the glucose won't be there in the cells at adequate levels. If that's the case, then cellular energy that gets created within the cells is not, not at a sufficient level. And if that's the case, then thyroid hormone won't work effectively, regardless of which type of thyroid hormone it is, T4, T3, or natural thyroid, or whatever. Um, Basically, that needs to get dealt with as well if there's a concern over, over glucose levels. And um, that's, that's an issue that is present for any thyroid hormone treatment. It doesn't, it, it's, not, it's not specific to the circadian T3 method or to the T3 dosage management process. But if it is dealt with, if it is um, uh, treated, identified and treated, then you can proceed quite happily to the uh, circadian T3 method. Um, if it isn't dealt with, then thyroid hormone treatment will be a problem anyway. Um, it's not. It's not. Um, it's going to affect whatever you do with thyroid hormone. Okay, so that's the basic kind of um, overall preparation work: assessing adrenal status, uh, assessing uh, nutrient status, dealing with any supplementation required for nutrients. Uh, understanding any other factors that might be applicable, um, like uh, blood sugar issues, potentially sex hormone issues as well would fall into that category, digestive system issues, looking at the whole situation and making sure that things are in the right uh, state prior to using thyroid hormone. Um, and that will just take a lot of guesswork out of the process. Because if you start thyroid hormone treatment and you've got multiple problems going on, then it's going to be extraordinarily hard to work out what's at fault. Is it the thyroid hormone treatment that's at fault or is it something else? So with this preparation phase, it's all about making the path to success as easy and as simple and as um, uh, smooth and straightforward and fast as possible. Okay, so that's, that's the preparation work. Now let me talk, talk about the method itself. Okay, um, Okay. So, so you could be using natural thyroid, because natural thyroid contains T3, or you could be using uh, a T3 drug, um, with potentially with a brand name like uh, Lyothyronine, or uh, Cynamel, or Tyramel, or Cytomel, or a number of other brand names. But the drug itself needs to have T3 in it. Um, now, the, the, from the last uh, blog post I did on this, you'll realise that, that the last four hours of sleep before the, the time that you get up in the morning is the time when the majority of the cortisol of the day is released. What the book um, recommends is that once, we, once you know that you've definitely got a low cortisol issue, that you identify time, typically one and a half hours prior to the time that you get up in the morning and take a relatively small dose of thyroid medication at that time and that would typically be a portion of the thyroid medication that contains T3 that you already take in the day so you're not doing anything particularly radical with it you're just taking it out of your daytime dose and taking it 1.5 hours before you get up in the morning one and a half hours before you get up in the morning now it is often better to start with a, a low dose of um, T3 containing medication, for instance 10 micrograms, um, rather than, than a much larger dose of 20 or 25 micrograms. Some people are, who are very sensitive to, to thyroid hormone, some people take 5. I've rarely seen that work um, effectively with the circadian T3 method, but for some people it does. But uh, uh, typically uh, people find they get better results by t starting with a, a dose of T3 containing medication of around 10 micrograms. 
Now, once that's taken at one and a half hours before you get up, um, you, tr you tend to go back to sleep again. Now, the, way, the best way to do that is to set an alarm clock for 1.5 hours before you get up, have your medication by your bedside, turn off the alarm as soon as it goes off. And, and for those that have got people who are light sleepers elsewhere in the house, you can get um, phones or alarm clocks that just vibrate under the pillow so you don't disturb anybody. Um, you turn it off, you take the thyroid medication, and then you go back to sleep. Don't get up, don't walk around, don't look out the window, don't take your blood pressure, don't take your temperature, just, just take the medication and attempt to go back to sleep. Now, some people have a real concern that if they do that, they won't sleep again. Now, when this method begins to work and the adrenal hormones begin flowing, then you'll sleep like a baby. You get better sleep after this than you've had for a long time. So um, you have to suspend your disbelief that it's going to ruin your sleep because it ultimately it won't when it's titrated correctly. And um, it's just a matter of determining that dose. So we start normally with 10 micrograms and um, if that doesn't have any effect whatsoever, then Patients have found that by increasing by 2.5 or 5 micrograms, then they may begin to get some sort of effect. And the way this is effect, the effects are determined is by looking at symptoms and signs, by looking at thyroid blood tests, by using symptoms and signs, and signs might be heart rate, body temperature, blood pressure. Um, those are some of the main ones. That other things could be looked at. Lab tests could be looked at for adrenal function, for instance. Uh, adrenal, adrenal saliva test, but symptoms as well can be looked at, and it's usually fairly obvious when this method is starting to be helpful. And the process involves basically increasing that that T3 containing medication dose until some benefit is detected. And at that point, at that point, then every few days or a week, that dose of T3 containing medication can be moved half an hour earlier in time. And that can be repeated and repeated to no more than four hours before you get up in the morning. And sometime during that period between 1.5 hours before getting up and four hours before getting up, it is usually obvious there comes a time when that dosage is, is, is optimal. And once that time is found, at that point, the dose of... Uh, T3 containing medication can be slowly, slowly increased. Um, usually to no more than 20 to 25 micrograms. Now, I have seen people that have been very successful on much higher levels than that. I've also seen people who have been incredibly successful with lower levels than 10, but the majority, the vast majority, seem to fit somewhere in between the 15 and 25 micrograms mark of T3 containing medication.